And the truth is a lot of people who are driven, focused, go-getters, Unfortunately, a lot of people who find themselves in that position are usually, or I shouldn't say usually, but sometimes, unfortunately, are lacking one main characteristic that is necessary in order to be an asset to the world. And that characteristic that's, ma that's lacking is usually character. Okay? Because when you are driven, when you're a focus, when you're a go-getter, when you're a risk taker, when you are somebody who's willing and able to go out there and conquer the world, one of the things that keeps you in check is character. Because you find yourself when you're in a position like that, you find yourself being able to take advantage of many people because of your abilities, because of your talents, because of your skills, because of your, your attitude, because of your fearlessness. But I think when you're placed and given that level of talent, skill, tenacity, that you should use it to benefit other people besides just yourself. If you're the only one benefiting from what you do, then you may want to reconsider what it is that you do. And I say that by, when I look at, you know, I, I sometimes I talk about other, quote unquote, people who are in, in the position of influence. And what is it that they're influencing people to do? Okay. What is it that they're peddling, if you will? You know, you listen to some of the, you know, I always like to look at music, for example. Sometimes you listen to some music and you say, are you helping people with this music? You hurting people with this music. You look at some of the, the things that people put out, the foods people put out, the, 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 the substances people sell to other people. And the only thing I can say is that there has to be some kind of void in character there that you would knowingly put out food that's detrimental to the health of the people who consume it, supplements that are detrimental to the health of the people who consume it, music that is detrimental to the, to the mental health of the people who consume it on a regular basis. All for what? Money? But sadly, a lot of people use their skills and their talents, their abilities in that manner. Why? Because of a because of a void of character. In my in in my opinion, character is the best and most valuable thing that you can ever own. And I know this for a fact because, like I said, I I, I had the luxury of, of of seeing my father's life and being there for my father's death. Okay, and I understood in that time that the most valuable thing that he left me was the lesson of good character. My father was a was, you know, he was a wealthy man for much of his for much of his life. He was he was a very well accomplished man. He was a very educated man. But one of the things that people admired the most about him and that that I admire the most about him was this level of character. Okay? His level of character. My dad always used to say, you know, at the end of the day, I sleep with myself. And I don't understand how people can do certain things and sleep with themselves. But me, frankly, I can't do it. And I'd ra he said, I'd rather go broke than betray my own character and soul. A lot of times we're in, we're, we're, a lot of times people are endowed with a certain level of skill and ability. And I think it's incumbent on those who have the most skill, the most ability, the most tenacity, the most strength, the most power, the most finesse to use those skills, abilities, strengths, power, finesse, not only to benefit themselves, to make an addition into the world. One of my favorite quotes in life is, 
the true character, the true test of a gentleman is one who puts more into the world than he takes out. And that's basically character. That's basically compassion. That's basically kindness. That's basically living your life not only to benefit yourself, but to uplift the people around you. Because at day's end, the money will be forgotten. Okay, the money will be forgotten. The um, the um, the cars, you know, the the, the houses, the the fancy everything, it'll be forgotten. Okay. But how you touch the souls of people, the imprint you leave on their heart will never go away. If you do things that are not savory sooner rather than later, they, they come out. You know, they come out. And when you're doing things that are of poor character. That is your legacy. And you're willing to, tr and a lot of people unfortunately are willing to trade their good name, their goodwill for money. As always with this old saying, some people are so broke all they have is money. There are way more things, there are things way more valuable in this world than money. And if you've been endowed with a certain level of skill and talent and ability, I would implore you to use those things to benefit more than just yourself. If you're somebody that makes, if you're in sales, you know, you know that what you're selling is not beneficial. You know, that's a, that's a, that was a hard decision I had to make. And, you know, to each his own, you know, everybody has their thing. Um, but when I was in the brokerage world, I realized that me and my firm were basically the only two people that were benefiting from what we were doing. And it was very, very profitable, you know, but I understood I didn't want to die doing that. And since I didn't know when I was going to die, <laughs> I made the decision to stop, even though I was very good at it. Okay. At some point in time, we have to, we have to make those choices. And that is the way how we'll transform this world is when people start to look at what they do and say, how am I impacting the lives of the people around me? Not just my family, you know, not just my, because that's everybody's excuse. Well, I'm just trying to feed my family. But are you trying to feed your family and therefore starving an entire neighborhood? Poisoning an entire generation of people just to feed your two or three kids if that's the choice and you know what I, I think I think I would have to sacrifice my two or three children if I save a million people from having to ingest whatever poison I'm dispensing character my friends is what leads you to that and unfortunately, in our world of go-get-it people, extremely talented people, driven people, money-hungry people, character is not, is not stressed as much. You know, a lot of people followed me for a lot of, for a couple of years now. And you guys realize that I haven't really promoted much, you know, many things. That's why I went and started my own supplement line, actually. Because I just could not promote certain things. And yeah, for, you know, for, for years, I could have made a lot more money promoting a lot of things. I got hit up for a lot of things to, to, to promote. But character-wise, I couldn't do it. And for some people, they would say it was a little extreme. But um, I could not in good conscience promote certain things and then sit in front of you and say some of the things I say. So I had to, you know, I had to not. For, for a good period of time, you know, some, you know, some of the money I could have used, you know, but I could, I could never buy back my character. And a lot of times when you, when people are trying to buy back their character, they're trying to buy it back from themselves. And that's hard. 
Because a lot of people will never find out what you really did. And now a lot of people will never, will never, will never um, view it as bad. You know, some people will see some of the things that people that you do and they'll, they'll be like, well, you know what? He's trying to do what he's got to do. You know, that kind of stuff like that. But um, character dictates that you don't. All right. And so once again, if you're an ambitious person, we always talk about this ambition thing and going for what you what you want, trying to be the best that you can be, um, achieving more, pushing yourself. All those things are true. But should all be filtered in the lens of character. Are the things you're doing only benefiting you or are you an asset to the world more most importantly is what you're doing hurting anyone in any way and don't get me wrong we we we, we no one no one is absolutely going to not get injured but your intentions have you really looked at what you do and can you honestly say, you know, what I do is not going to harm anyone at all? And not some justifiable deniability. That's not what we're talking about here because people can be justifiably, can justifiably deny anything. You know, that's what the food companies do. They put out the stuff and say, well, I'm not making them eat it. You know, that's justifiable deniability. I think what we need in this world more than anything right now is we need more character. We need more integrity. We need people who are willing to look at the totality of what they do and say, is this really helping or is this hurting? Okay. And will you be able to satisfy everyone? No. No, you'll never be able to satisfy everybody. Somebody will always think, someone will always think you can do more. But make sure that when you ask yourself that question, you satisfy yourself because at day's end, you are going to sleep with you. And ambition without character, once again, is dangerous. It's deadly in many cases. And we're living the consequence every day in our lives, in our society, in our world of ambition without character. Okay? So re-examine your, your goals in life. Re-examine the things that you do and ask, you know, is anyone else benefiting from this besides just me and my immediate little circle? What kind of legacy am I leaving? That's what's most important. And that's what's going to transform the world, if you will. If people start viewing the things they do from that angle. Okay. We have to be very mindful. We have to start looking at the people that we look up to and start examining them, examining them from that angle too. You know, the crazy part about it is some of the people that we celebrate the most are the ones who put the toxic messages out, the toxic music. They promote the toxic foods and drinks and we cheer for them because we say oh well they're making that money but a lot of times they're making that money at you and your children's expense in my opinion that's not to be admired you know I applaud them for having that level of skill. But all that without character? What is that? 
Good character is the best currency you can ever have, my friend. Right. So that's all I have for you guys. You know, I, I was thinking about that this morning. And, um, and you know, I, I was saying, you know, that's because if you look around us right now, you know, look at what that's what's missing. That's what's missing from our politicians. That's what's missing from our from our from our influencers, our athletes is there's no character. There's no character. There's no way you can have character. Any empathy for your fellow person. And they do some of them. I shouldn't say everybody's not like that. As some of them do some of the things they do. There's no way you can have that, you know. And then how much money is enough? You know how much how much money can you really have? You know how much can you really use? You can't. You know. I, and I tell you, I always tell you guys. My dad was a funny guy. My dad was. A, he was a very practical man. He thought about things from a very practical standpoint. Because I remember, you know, the lesson my dad taught me about excess. You know. And um, I, I remember that at that time it was it was in the early '70s, you know, and um, uh, Muhammad Ali was showing his 42 bedroom mansion. And by the way, Muhammad Ali is one of my favorite people of all time. Um, that would be one of the only people that, if he was alive, I would stand in line to meet and shake his hand because you know he he showed character with a lot of things that he did. Um, but uh, you know, he was showing his 42 bedroom mansion. My dad was like, man, that's that's such a waste. Right. You know, and it, it's different if it was a guy who was saying this, who did he who he himself did not have the money to do something like that. But my dad had the money to do that. You know, and he said, that's such a waste. And I'm like, why is that a waste? I mean, 42 bedrooms, is the big house that, you know, because that, you know, you admire stuff like that. Our society teaches you to admire those things. But my dad told me a lot about excess that day. My dad said. He says, what, if, what does 42 bedrooms mean? He says, son, I don't care how good you are. You can only be in one room at a time. <laughs> and I chuckled because that made sense. You, you, you literally can be in only one room at a time. And he says, and within reason, you know, if you're smart, you can only take up a so much space. He says, because everything after that is just excess. So how much excess do you need? And at what point, or at what point in your drive for excess, are you now denying someone something? Could you give a little bit more to someone? You know, at what point? You know, so it taught me a lot about, you know, excess. And, you know, as I, you know, when you get, when you're younger and you have the ability, you still do the excess things. But the, but uh, that lesson resonated in my head. And, and over the last decade of my life, things like that have now reverberated in my mind. And so I don't, I don't live for excess anymore because I understand that I can watch it. I can see it. You know, those are the things that actually have come back to build my character and my understanding of life and what life is all about. You know, I had a big, huge house before. I remember one time I had this huge house, you know, 5,000 square foot. And I had bought something, you know, personal story here, but I had bought something and went downstairs and set it down on the pool table. And um, I remember a couple of weeks later, I was looking for it and I, and I was like, I lost it. I couldn't find it. And I went and bought another one. And it just so happened, it had to, had to be almost six months later. <laughs> when I went downstairs um, in that room, and I, it was sitting right there on the, on the pool table. And I said to myself, wow, this actually means that I have not been downstairs in six months. So that room was excess. It was wasted space. It was just there to say it was there and I had it. That's it. And that was one of the light bulb things that went off in my head, you know, about, that was about maybe 12, 15 years ago, you know, that let me understand, that made me, that brought me back in line to where I understood excess. Excess. 
You know, we, we see excess around us all the time. We see people killing themselves, overworking themselves for huge, huge houses, huge discs, theater rooms, all these things like that. I had a lived in the house with a theater room in it for f- five years, and I, I, I went down there once or twice, literally. <laughs> Excess, you know? For the amount that the theater room costs, the space and all that stuff like that, you could just go to the theaters once a week and you still would have got more more use out of it than the one that was right downstairs. You know? These are the things that we have to learn. These are the things that I wish for our society that with all this ambition that we see around us, that we filter all of this through the lens of character. Because once again, ambition without character is dangerous. It's dangerous for you and it's very dangerous for our world. And I wish more and more people would understand that and govern themselves with that rule. If what you do is on, if what you do is only benefiting you, then you may want to reconsider, reconsider what it is that you do.